right. And it certainly um, makes the performance yesterday even more impressive, the fact that they did it largely aside from that one great throw and catch without Adam Thielen, um, what Kirk Cousins was able to do. Three straight games now, Sage, over 140 quarterback rating. Um, he ranks, Kirk Cousins does second for the most play action percentage used in the entire NFL. And I tweeted out this morning a uh, gif of the Grinch doing his smile, being you watching mm. all of these play actions because you mm. spent the off season. You spent last season talking about get mm. Kirk under center, run these play actions, run the zones. And you tried to convince us all. You said, Gary knows what he's doing with Kirk cousins. And uh, are these last three weeks proof that Gary and Kevin Stefanski know what they're doing with Kirk cousins? Well, and that classic sort of like new system, and it takes some time, uh, a little bit of you know, more time of playing actually in games instead of like scrimmages or preseason games, which mostly is backups. And it, it's taken a little while, but man, this thing is hitting on all cylinders. And it is all these things that we talked about in the off season. You know, it's smaller offensive linemen. So they got a center uh, who's a guy that can really, he does a great job uh, in the run game and is now trying to, is learning how to be a better pass protector. And it's finally starting to, to be better, but just the combination of the zone running scheme, which is you know, Dalvin Cook's a fantastic back, but the details of this offensive line are slowly coming together. And then uh, the, the play action and the bootlegs and, and Cousins starting to get that timing with his wide receivers and everyone starts of getting those details. I feel like slowly, but surely uh, these guys have worked and gotten better and, and it is really, really clicking on all cylinders. And we're seeing absolutely the best of Kirk Cousins, but we're also seeing with that is the offensive line playing absolutely fantastic uh, hats off to those guys for three straight weeks. But I think the best performance they've had maybe in years. I mean, it was really, really good uh, with that offensive line this past, uh, you know, yesterday on Sunday and, uh, and, you know, Rick Dennison, what he has done, uh, the way they've put some pieces together and the, what, the way those guys have improved. I mean, Kirk is not getting hit very much and we're, and we're of course not seeing the bad plays, but we're also seeing Kirk making some plays. I mean, yes. when, when the pocket has broken down, you know, bad things aren't happening. They're either throws it away or good things are happening. I mean, there's some really uh, improvement amongst that those two groups, the offensive line and Kirk Cousins, the quarterback. And we're seeing some fantastic uh, Vikings offensive football right now. And finally, in a game where the defense didn't play well, the team got down. And here we go. This offense picked it up and yes. played really good football for four quarters. And there's all types of big plays in the second half where it could have gone either or, and, and Kirk made a great throw, or there was a great uh, block by somebody, or offensive line did a good job, or, or on the touchdown to, to Kyle Rudolph, he does a fantastic job of rubbing his guy uh, into his own defender and becoming wide open versus man coverage in a route that's usually bad versus man. I mean, there was a whole bunch of good in the second half of this ball game, and uh, it's going to be fun to discuss. Okay, so I, I want to start out, on my end, my reaction of just giving a, just a, a tiny little rant, just a, just tiny. Give me a second here, Sage. So every time Kirk Cousins plays really well for a stretch, we get, ha, proving the critics wrong. And every time he doesn't play well in a game, it's Kirk Cousins is the worst quarterback in the entire world. We should put him in a rocket ship and we should shoot him to the sun. And those, wait, 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 what is that from? It's from a movie uh, or something is like it? that. Maybe I, I thought I made it up, but maybe it is from a movie. But I, uh, George Carlin once said we should push someone in, inside of a portable toilet and light them on fire. I thought that was a little aggressive. Hmm, but anyway, interesting. so uh, and last year was a disappointment for Kirk Cousins. He didn't play well enough. He had chances to put them in the playoffs and he didn't show up in important games. Like that's a fact that happened throughout his career. He has had high highs and low lows and Every quarterback has this spectrum of possible outcomes based on their talent, right? And the circumstances will decide whether you are in the red, yellow, orange, or green, right? It, depending on what you have around you. And with Kirk Cousins in 2016, Pro Football Focus gave him an 80.6 grade for that year. He threw for nearly 5,000 yards. He has Sean McVay. He's got Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon, two great tight ends, a all-time great left tackle, Trent Williams, Hall of Famer, probably. And he's really, really good. And then the next two years, his team's had deficiencies, and he's not as good. And this year, the line is playing better, like you mentioned. The weapons have been increased tenfold with Irv Smith and B.C. Johnson. Last year, Laquan Treadwell is playing half the snaps, and he's barely an NFL wide receiver, and he's playing half the snaps out there in a system that didn't really work for him. So 
all of this is, this isn't Kirk playing with a bigger chip on his shoulder. I don't think, I don't think Kirk is any different. I think he's the exact same guy and he's played against some defenses that are really, really bad. And that's helped a lot too. And he's put up great numbers and he's done his job exactly from the level of talent. His talent hasn't changed. I think it's the circumstances have changed. And we laid out a bunch of ways last year, how he could be better. And it seems like Kevin Stefanski may have been listening to the podcast because they've you know, checked off a lot of those boxes. So it frustrates me that every week has to be some referendum on Kirk cousins as a quarterback. And it seems to swing back and forth when really like this is him. And they've done a great job of putting the things around him to maximize his skill. Yeah. So like a lot of quarterbacks, you're only really as good as the players around you. And with Kirk, that's definitely the case. And when he had, when the pieces around him are working well and they're coached well and they're playing well uh, and there's all this detail there, he does a great job executing within that. When they don't have good players, say, at offensive line, or it's a bad scheme in front of them, or it's a coach that's in shotgun continually, that, that Kirk Cousins doesn't play well in those situations. And when the team around him is good, he can look really, really good. And I think those guys, the, really what's, around, what's really changed is everything around him. And I think it's it's probably some of the best coaching he's ever had. I think it's some of the best coaching this offensive line has had uh, in a long time. And he's got a great running back. He's got two all-pro wide receivers. He's got a young tight end who is looking better and better by the week, both in the running game and the throwing game. And it's all sort of working. And when, when, when Kirk has time, I put him as a top five uh, you know, uh, what I would call like a seven on seven quarterback, you know, when you do seven on seven, Kurt can be up there with the best of them if there was some sort of tournament, but, but it's not real football, right? Because why? Because there's, there is pressure and there is those things. So Kirk doesn't yep. do well when all these other things occur, right? But in this game, one, uh, the, the offensive line isn't giving the defense many opportunities to, to, uh, to get to him and they're doing a great job. But when the few time, few times it did happen, Kirk has, done something uh, where he has become a little bit of a playmaker. Uh, and I said, sometimes it's throwing the ball away, but he made a couple plays too. And uh, I don't know if he's becoming more confident or what, but he is making some really, really good throws. He's not being foolish with the football. He's making good decisions and he's seeing the field extremely well. And, uh, and he's making throws that didn't seem like he was making earlier this year and some of those bad losses and, and throws that he definitely didn't even make last year. So uh, it's all just sort of coming together and Kirk is playing well and the, so the, the offensive line is playing well, but he's got great players around him. I mean, Dalvin Cook. Uh, he also has a running game. I mean, that's the thing is last year. We didn't see the best of Kirk Cousins because the running game was abysmal. They yep. were like, I think they're ended the season 31st in the league or something like that. Yep. Now they're up in, you know, top three, like in every single possible rushing category. And Dalvin Cook, another 5.7 yards per carry. And, and they said, you know, that we're seeing all the good stuff. Stephon, we talked about in the offseason, Stephon Diggs and Am Thielen are going to have higher yards per catch this year because of this play action thing. Wow, Stephon Diggs, 20.3 yards per catch yesterday, right? And Thielen, a one catch for 25. I mean, we're seeing these numbers that we haven't seen because it's this is a style of defense that really, really fits the players that they have, but also fits the quarterback that they have. And, and they're, they're executing at a really high level right now. Now, the big conversation, though, is whether you can take these wins and transfer them over against better teams and how much this really means. I'm going to give you a stat here, Sage. In terms of expected points added against the pass, here's how their uh, opponents have done that they've beaten so far this year. Here's where they rank. 32nd, 30th, 26th, 24th, 22nd. <laughs> um, that's not in order, but that's like they're all bottom third or the worst in the NFL against the pass. The teams that Kirk Cousins has lit up, the, the teams where they've been an efficient passing game. And you wouldn't be surprised that you know, Chicago and Green Bay are much higher on the list. When, when than... you get a chance, by the way, I'd love to check out the run. Because the way this offensive line, that is the biggest difference. I think not only the commitment to the run, but the way these guys have continually ran the ball fairly well. Remember, was it last week versus Philly? They were giving up like 63 yards yeah. a game, and Vikes ran for about 122, I think. So I think that stat more than the the passing yard come from, truly, we're in a situation where the run is setting up the pass. That's without a doubt. And, uh, and and we're definitely seeing that. The run is the run to Dalvin Cook is setting up the fullback, for crying out loud, because the defense <laughs> then had to make yes. a decision between a fullback on a third and one yes. or Dalvin Cook, uh, who is for the pitch on, on a third and one, and there's a 10-yard gain there. So it all it all comes down to, I think, the Dalvin Cook in this running game. That starts the whole thing off. And if the Vikings struggle against teams down the stretch there, then we're talking about can 
can uh, the, can the quarterback and the offensive line still produce enough yards, still producing that you know 400 yard level more through the air than on the ground? We'll, we'll have to see. Well, they haven't played any really good run defenses either, aside from Philadelphia, and uh, they ran okay against Philadelphia, but only 3.5 yards per carry. But of course, they were playing backup corners who forgot how to play football, and uh, that was problematic. But even teams like Detroit, Detroit is. 28th in expected points added against the run on defense. So they're horrendous. And it's not surprising that the Vikings had a huge day against them. And when you look at the teams that they beat, there isn't a single good defense that you can point to. So the question is not, I mean, I don't expect Kirk Cousins to play good defenses and have 140 quarterback rating. It's what percentage of this can carry over when they go to Dallas and play a team with a lot of talent that will be able to pressure the quarterback. I mean, Detroit, that is a, that is a really good question. And uh, I, I completely agree with you. I think, you know, you don't want to look at it from a pessimist view and this, you know, view of like, okay, every time the Vikings win, everything has to be great. And everything, everything, every time the Vikings lose, everything has to be terrible. Sometimes you, know, you remember a couple of years ago when they lost to the Steelers uh, and case Keenan was a quarterback, but he actually played pretty well. I'm like, you know, uh, it's not bad for uh, for a backup quarterback to come in and, and play well at Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. right? And they lost the game. So, like, you can take the positives out of that. And I think what you're seeing is, uh, you know, we have to be careful on how positive we are based off the fact that they haven't defensively played anybody great yet. Yeah, they, and, and trying to contextualize what it all means. I mean, I, I think if you play against— And against the great teams, they didn't play well. Right, Green Bay and exactly. The good defenses, they, they did not play well at all in those games. And Cousins, against the teams that can pressure the quarterback, was pressured, and it threw him off. And that's going to continue to be the question. Even after Chicago had a tough day yesterday against Teddy Bridgewater— <clears throat> Uh, we'll turbo snark about that later. Uh, you can't. I, you can't get too snarky about the Teddy thing. I, I think everyone understood. Like, what do you do with a guy who's gonna? No, no, no. It's it's a, not, it's know? not that. It's about the people who are like, you only threw fourteen touchdowns. He's not a good quarterback. Like, okay, All right. he wins, man. He yeah. wins. Sean, I will say Sean he's Payton, a winner. Yeah, Sean Payton seems to think he's pretty good. But yeah, anyway, he he finds ways to win games. It doesn't always have to be thrown for three fifty. I'll uh, tell you that. Green Bay and Chicago in passing defense are fifth and sixth in expected points added. So they're very good, and they were very good against the Vikings passing game. And those were the two games they lost. And so Dallas is a little farther down the list, but I think that they're going to be a better challenge for the Vikings here than someone like Washington, which is another horrendous defense. They're 28th. Uh, So this is another game where they should be able to steamroll and continue to look good. It's just how do the successful things that they're doing now transfer to those important games because i think we set the standard well, i think there's a couple i think there's a couple games down the road obviously they have green Bay and chicago again but we'll see dallas who's got all types of athletes on yep. defense and you know van der Esch, their their star linebacker got hurt with a neck injury last night and it doesn't seem like it's season ending or anything like that but they've got them they've got the seahawks who play good play good defense the broncos do play good defense despite yeah. the fact that they're not winning very many games for the most part the defense has been pretty good they have not gotten any pressure though they had a crazy deal where like three or four games in the year they had like two quarterback pressures <laughs> it was something like no sacks yeah that's bad. It, was, it was it was incredible um and i uh, said so, you know green bay and chicago to to end the season they're going to see some good defenses um, and, and we'll have to see how they hold up against the better teams the second time around. And I've always thought in this style of offense, when I was in it uh, in, uh, in, in Houston with Gary Kubiak, it, it did seem like as the year progressed, our offense got better and we started clicking a little bit more. And guys, the new guys, the rookies, the, the free agents that came in, it was starting, the, the coaching was all starting to pick up and we were seeing all the different looks. And, we, and you know, it's like the second time around we had seen this look before and this is what happened last time and guys played better. Uh, the detail was better. And I'm, I feel like I've seen that already the last couple of games, again, against not as good competition, but I've seen better attention to detail by from the quarterback to the offensive line to the receivers uh, uh, you know, as the season has progressed. We'll see if they do against top notch defenses down the line. And, and I don't think you can throw these games out is kind of what one of the points I wanted to make is that there are some people who are saying, well, who cares? These defenses are bad. Throw it out. But when you this is the NFL, dominate, I will say, like, this is the NFL. Like there's a lot of great players out there. You know, what I mean, so, yeah, there's you know, it's even the 32nd ranked defense like they've got probably a pro bowler over there and they've got guys that are first round draft picks and they're great athletes and you know they can wreck a game it's you know it's so it's it you can't you get i can't be too 
I guess this made as a, the former player coming out at me, but like, you know, just because you're doing something against the 26th the ranked whatever doesn't mean you still have to get it done. And, uh, and, and the Vikings have, have been getting it done lately. Well, and if it was just a bunch of check downs or something, then you might say, well, you know, the defense won them a game or what, but it, it wasn't that these, these games, this was the offense and the passing game, winning them the game. Uh, in each of the last three weeks and Kirk Cousins making a number of just a number of throws. fantastic throws. I mean, the a one, number the of one really Thielen. good, a number of really good throws. And the one to Thielen was, I would say, minimum third, if not his, the fourth guy in that progression. Uh, when, when you're booting to your left, he's the backside post and usually you look for the over route. You got to come back. Uh, out in front of you, maybe somebody in the flat, and that fourth guy is that backside post. So what he saw is he saw when he booted to his left, he saw the tight end uh, or, or maybe the inside, I think it was a tight end, get picked up by the free safety. And that free safety jumped him, and then here comes Seelan, uh, you know, behind. And, and a great throw. That's an off balance. He flipped his hips, made an, uh, a very, very good, uh, accurate throw on the run. I mean, it, it was an Aaron Rodgers type of throw, and obviously didn't look as pretty as the way Aaron Rodgers or like a Pat Mahomes does it or something or Russell Wilson. But it was still extremely effective, and and he did that a couple times in this ball game. He made some really, really nice throws on the move, in particular to his left.